Hey everyone, Port ISM, welcome to part 11 of our Mola Fratia Hero Lantia Delta HF Integrale Evo 92 video build, part 11, and I'm flying through it. Back onto more of the interior today. Today we're going to deal with the seat, dashboard, door cards, get some wiring in there, but well, hoses really it is. Um, I'm really progressive with this interior. Now, a little bit of a confession to make. I've lost some footage on this build. Um, I have like... 11 SD cards, 128 gigs, some 64s, and I always save my old footage, uh, even when the videos are uploaded. And for some reason, the SD card with the filming of all the painting, which is over there normally, uh, I've left in the camera and formatted it by accident. So I've lost all the painting off this video. So the original plan was to have one video on the seat, one video on the dashboard, so I've combined it into one. All you've missed is some acid edge primer with a white metal some grey priming of resin parts and some black priming of the rest of the bits some lp5 the main part i've lost which i've been gutted about is the texture paint on the seats but you've seen me use it before and i'll explain through the video how i did it that's the only bit i'm really gutted i've lost but it is what it is i can't go back and get the footage i was a bit mortified yesterday when i found out but hey ho there it is so part 11 combines both of these now and we're still going to come back in part 12 and carry on with the interior and get it finished. But these are going to look great when they're done. If you've seen the thumbnail of the video, you've already seen the parts. And uh, really happy how today is going to turn out. I am. Right. So let's have a listen to a short message and then get into today's build. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal Me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, so on with our interior. Like I said, a little bit of a calamity losing the uh, the footage. So no painting at all in this video episode. Uh, real shame, but nothing to do about it. Just accidentally deleted footage off an SD card. And uh, yep, as careful as I am, it happens. So we've got the resin seat. I'm just clearing out the uh, harness uh, holes with my Sujirido file. Um, just need a little bit of cleaning up. Nothing too bad. Just a quick uh, run around. Um, these side ones, though, needed quite a bit of opening up. They were a little bit too uh, restrictive, constrictive. And, um, yeah, the Suji Burrito Half Moon file, making short work of it. Very high-quality files that we used to sell at UMP. We can't get them anymore, unfortunately. Um, but they were great. I have the full set of these, and they are super high-quality files. And, uh, yeah, they make nice work on plastic and resin because very, very smooth, uh, not very aggressive files at all. So like I say, just open it up, moving all the wisps of resin, straighten everything up and making sure it's all even. Same on the other side, just to make sure it's all nice and even. So really nice seats, these. Really good. They're going to look absolutely phenomenal when they're done. If you've seen the thumbnail to the video, you've had a bit of a spoiler. Um, a light seam around them, not all the way around, just in certain places. So we're going to go around with a UMP 240 sponge. And just get rid of all the seams. Don't need any aggressiveness at all. Don't forget it is resin, so it's not plastic. So it will snap if you're not careful. Um, very easy to mistake this for plastic because the quality of the resin is quite decent. Quite unusual to see white resin as well. Like I say, just work our way around. Get rid of all the uh, the seam or any molding points and the pore plug, which is at the bottom, which we'll take care of with a 400 UMP thinny stick like so. So as you repeat that for both the seats um until we're happy it's all cleaned up and then we've got the white metal um seat brackets as well so we've cleaned um these all in the tumbler all the white metal parts were cleaned in the tumbler so we got rid of all the nasty blackness off them uh, but there are seams around everywhere so we're gonna need a combination of the tamiya uh basic file set to get rid of the main part of the seam and then the ump sponges and they are particularly bent. All the white metal parts do tend to get a bit bent in the Model Fratia Hero kits. So using a straight edge, which is my bench, we're going to level everything out. And then visually by eye, straighten all the individual 
um, points out were required. So not too bad, quite easy to straighten out. Uh, like I say, if you need a flat edge, put it on your bench and just push it down that way. Uh, a quick test fit, do no harm to do that. So we've got three locating points that need drilling out. There we go, so that's that. And then we're going to go through and mark off all the parts we need for the dashboard. Quite a few of them, so going through meticulously, making sure we've got them all. Now, my original plan with these videos was to break this into two. And I have one video focused on the seats and one focusing on the dashboard. But with losing all the footage of painting, I could combine it into one. So yeah, it's kind of good in a way, kind of not, because I would like to have separated it. But it is what it is. There's not much we can do about it. As annoying as it is, it happens sometimes. And I just accidentally deleted the footage. Uh, pull plug, cut off the dashboard, cleaned up with a thinny stick again as well. Um, these are all going to be primed. All the plastic parts will be primed in a surface of 1500 black. All the white metal parts will be primed in uh, U-Pol Acid Etch Grey Primer, then primed in Mr. Surface of 1500 Black, and that way we get uniform colour, as we saw with the body. We don't want to prime in grey and spray different black colours. Um, and again, all these parts all need cleaning up. There's quite a lot of parts of the dashboard. This is quite an involved part of the car, and a section of the car I've really looked forward to building up. And really nice to get to this stage uh, after some of the stalling we've had recently and this is going to look great at the end as well really enjoyed building this and this really revived my mojo in building this kit again because i'm not going to lie i had kind of lost it a little bit uh with some of the dramas i had with the roll cage and just waiting for so long it did put a bit of a, a downward spin on the build but i sat here this day on a live stream cleaned all the parts up started painting and just fell in love with the kit again so Happy days, it means we can crack on with the build. Right then, lots of parts to drill out. So with every part, we're gonna test fit. So we drilled out the steering column, the indicator stalks, and the steering wheel. Just having a quick test fit that they all fit, and they do. And then lots and lots of holes to drill in the dashboard, the seats, all the white metal bits that attach. So I'm not gonna bore you by showing them all. I'm literally going via the instructions, looking what needs drilling where, drilling a pile of hole, checking everything fits. If it does, leaving it be. And if it needs a bigger hole drilling, drilling it in place. Um, but test fitting is definitely the way. Now, this is after paint. So like I say, um, these were primed in all the... Um, sorry, actually, the seats were primed in grey. I primed these in grey. And then I painted them in grey um, texture paint from zero. I used a lot of the bottle. I'll explain at the end segment of the video how I sprayed it. Um, but for now, we're going to um, make a template for our carbon composite decals for the back. In fact, I can tell you now how I did it. Changing a knife, nice fresh blade for cutting um, uh, masking tape. So with the texture paint from zero, I had to put a coat down, build it up slowly, get all the angles, get all behind where the seat where it needs to go, all and all the recesses. And then for the last few coats, I bring the airbrush a good foot away and just kind of hose it on. And that way the paint dries mid-air and it adds a much more textured powdered effect. It's how I've always done it and it works really well. The downside to this is I used up nearly an entire bottle of 30ml of the grey charcoal stuff. But the seats look fantastic in my opinion. I was going to flock these. Um... I did think about using micro balloons and everything, and I'm glad I did it this way because it looks really good. And these seats look absolutely spanking at the end. They look really, really good. So I'm glad I used the texture paint, and I will be stocking up on a lot more of the different colors for future builds. So like I said, we use masking tape here, put it in place, cut around it to get the shape of the side. We're going to do the seat in three pieces. So one each side and one center piece. Now I did screw up here and I put this side on the back of the decal. So that reversed it and gave us the other side of the seat instead. So no harm, no foul. Just need to remember on the other one to put it on the front of the decal. The same um, template. But luckily they are symmetrical so everything worked out fine. So cut it out roughly and then we're going to cut it exactly up to where we um, cut out the masking tape. And that way we can cut out um so we can get the back and paper off and the decal should literally slot in place with no cutting on the uh, seat at all which will save us time and look a lot better so carbon composite uh kevlar seats on this i believe they are 
So different color than usual. And um, we're using the Scale Motorsport carbon fiber film, which I haven't used for a while. But I bought this um, sheet of decal film especially for this. As you can see, look, it all lines up really well. So happy days there. So we can take that one off. And put that to one side. We won't need that one then. And then just a quick double check. And yeah, the lines up absolutely perfect. So in the water it goes for, what, 20 seconds or so into the warm water. And then we're going to hold it at the top and then carefully manipulate it in place. A little bit tricky to do, but quite easy in the end. A little bit of time and care needed here, a bit of patience. Just get it all pushed around so you get exactly where you want it. Like I say, because we cut it, it should fit in exact. And then grab our decal solutions. We're going with UMP normal solution here just to get it all set in place first. Uh, I know this is probably going to need strong and extra strong at least to set it. A little bit of decal or water, decal water on the front. Just going to mop that up. Those seats look great. I am very impressed how well they look. So we've got it in place with the normal. Now we're hit with the strong. Put plenty on there. We're just going to let it soak. We've got a little bit of a crease there. We'll pull that out in a minute. Cotton board will get rid of that in a little bit for us. And we're just going to work it with the decal solutions and then pour it to one side to do its magic. Like so. While we're waiting for that one, I'll do the other side as well. So just line it all up. And same solution again. I actually spill up my decal solution on the bench. So I'm just mopping it up off the bench like you do. And then back to the other one. And we're just going to keep rotating and working and rotating and working until we get that decal set where we want it. So they do react really well. Once you get to the strong and extra strong, it sets it almost instantly. Just melts them in place. I've also cut out the cutouts for the belts as well. And then a little bit of heat. A little bit off camera, I zoomed in a little bit today, but obviously wasn't really conscious of how zoomed in I was, so a little bit off camera at times, I do apologise. With the heat in place, the decal solution's working well, we've got a cotton bud and we're just trying to manipulate everything down, and I'm going to cut off a little bit of the excess decal film underneath where we're going to attach our seat uh, mounting brackets. We don't want to interfere with any say glue and rip anything off. So we just do that and we grab our brush again and make sure it's all burnished down properly and then just leave it to one side let it dry work on the other one and then come back with the back piece as well now i did contemplate making a template but masking tape and freshly applied decals don't mix well together and i thought all i'm going to do is catch the decal and end up ripping it off so i opted not to do that and just cut out a rectangular piece that was just long enough to overhang the edge on each side it's an odd pattern on these. It's not shaped in any way, shape, or form, so it matches up really easily. And then just hit it with the decal solutions and get it manipulated into place. And then we can cut around the top, like so. You say a nice fresh blade is essential doing this. Just make sure it's burnished down properly where you want it. We're just going to cut out those harness holes as well. And a nice, steady, competent hand is what you want. For the edge of the seat, just lightly cut around it. And there we go. Job done. And then burnish the rest down with the brush. Get it all set in place into the ribs across the middle. Get any creases out. And again, we'll hit it with some heat and get it all set in place. So we've got the martini decals to pop on the top of the seat as well. We've got the driver names to pop on there and a Sparco logo as well. So just applied in a standard manner. Pop them on. All the factory Hero decals are great. They lay down no bother at all. Um setting in place really nice just pay attention to which seat is which make sure you get the driver's seat with the correct name on obviously we are doing the legendary uha kankanen's car 
So get it all lined up, hit it with the decal solutions, a little bit of heat. And uh, later on, not in this video, we're going to give all these decals a little bit of a matte coat uh, to blend it all into the seat. But I just want to make sure everything was dry uh, before we did that. So we don't do it today, but we will do it in a subsequent video. See to starting to come alive now with the decals looking really good. While they're setting, we'll put some of the other decals on some of the dashboard components. So this is the fuse, uh, fuse board, relay board. Uh, we've got the co-pilots. I think it's a, a computer, is it? Is it the co-pilots uh, computer for the stages? I forget what these are now. Got a nice martini logo for there as well. Like I say, these Model Fat Hero decals, they lay down absolutely beautiful. They really do. A nice Lanty logo on the main instrument panel as well. And I'm just setting these in place with a uh, strong UMP. I've used these enough now to know that they need that. And then there's some warning light uh, decals to go on as well for battery uh, voltage and what have you, I think it is. And we've got the instrument panel in there as well. So it's starting to come alive now. Uh, steering wheel, we've primed and painted this. It was painted in uh, Tamiya LP5 semi-gloss black. So I'm going to mask the center and spray the rest of it in textured uh, zero paints. I've got my head in paint marker in black to paint all the buttons and what have you on the dash. Just adds a bit of a glossier black finish to some of the raised areas, some of the buttons and dials. Uh, just adds a little bit of visual interest to the dash. It makes it look a little bit less monotone. Adds a bit more interest. It does take a while to dry this stuff, so make sure you don't handle it straight away. But they are quite precise as well. And then we get this nice acetate cover for the fuse box, um, fuse layout, relay layout. So we need to cut around it as carefully as we can. Like so. Tammy decal scissors are very good for doing stuff like this. Very, very precise scissors. But obviously, any scissors can be used, but these are my scissor of choice. I've been for 12, 13 years now. This is the second pair I've had. Still got the original pair, and they work great. Got a couple of holes to drill in there as well for some, a couple of rivets that are going through. So I've got my old, venerable, battery-powered drill, which uh, a few of you know of. And no, I'm not answering any questions about the drill. No, I am. It's a, it's a Micromark drill. You can't get it anymore, unfortunately. And there we go. That's down in place. We've got a couple of rivets to go through there to hold it in place. So they're popped in just there as well. And then to secure those, we're going to flip it over. I'll pop a little bit of Bob Smith's odorless glue in the back. Don't put too much on. You don't want to seep through. And a couple of spots on the mounting point where it sits as well. And there we go, we can pop that in place. Jobs are good, isn't? that's looking good. Now, with the instrument panel, a couple of dabs of say glue. Didn't really need this, to be honest, because the friction fit was very tight. It would have held itself in there, no problem at all. But the glue, um, we know it's going nowhere. Just push that home fully. And then we've got some clear pre-cut acetate sheets in the kit as well. So these go on these couple of dials. So I've just placed them on top. And then just give them a little prod with the decal tweezers just to push them in. And there we go. That holds them in. Same on this one as well on the other side. So that's already in there. And I'm just gluing the actual dial in place. Like so. And then we've got a whole load of little toggle switches to put in place. So these are white metal. These have all been painted up. I have a little dab of glue, a yabba dabba do. We can get all these in. There's loads of them all over the dash. So we're just um, going through the instructions, section by section, and just making sure we've got all the dials. There's a few rotary knobs and buttons that go in as well to make sure they're all in the correct place. Uh, there is a more precise picture at the very top above the dashboard, which you can see on the instructions, which shows where these go. So just pay attention to that and make sure you get everything in the right place. And like I say, all these holes were test fitted before we put any paint down. But lots of little switches. And again, they really add to the dash and really bring it alive. 
we've got the very center console section now to glue in place so a couple of dabs of glue hold that in place and i got a fingerprint on the uh the freshly painted dials so i'm just adding them back in paint markers are great but they do take quite a while to dry fully and then the cb radio one of the coolest points about this kit i think is a cb radio that comes with it so that's glued in place like so the actual mic itself i've painted in lp let me see what colors it's a racing white so it was lp39 i think it is off white and steering column we've got the lower piece glued in the back this piece quite tricky to line up I had to hold this for a few seconds to get it to grip and then there's a cb radio mic i've made the coiled wire exactly how we made the coil wire the other day i just wrapped it around a bit of wire um, to get the coil so this is the black supplied wire that came with the kit and then cut it to size angled it so it looks like it's hanging little dab of glue push it in the bottom let that dry and we can position it so it hangs like it's hanging naturally in the car so a great little touch and then this very front section of the mic needs in film with black so we've got some vlog model color black water a couple of drops of water in there micro brush and we just fill it wipe off any excess now that we can let it dry and if you're moistening a cotton bud later on it will wipe off this is the beauty of applying water-based paint over lacquer We've got the steering wheel central marker now in yellow. The Momo decal is on the steering wheel and the decals in the center boss as well. I've got the wrong decal on here. I'm assuming there should be a Lancer decal. I can't find anywhere on anywhere. I put the wrong decal and put one of the seatbelt harness decals in. But luckily I've got a spare, so we're just going to pretend that's correct and move on. Steering wheel in place. Again, a little bit tricky. Make sure it's straight. Make sure it's all lined up. And there we go that's that in place as well that looks really good too dashboard looks absolutely fantastic and there we go there's our dash almost complete looking really good if i don't say so myself yep really happy with that it's turned out really well we've got a fuel sorry this is it the start motor the fuel cut off i can't remember what this is now it's actual battery isolation switch isn't it is what it is so that's a P part. So I've cut it off and glued it in place. I'm just going to brush paint it with some LP7 red. So a couple of coats of that covers that no problem at all. And then another cool part of the kit, the door cards. So the rally car had the original Lancia road car door cards in. And this very funky 80 striping material. So the kit comes with it too. So this is self-adhesive cloth with the funky pattern on there. So you cut this out, we lay it over the white metal door cards, um, and yeah, that's it. That's all we've got to do. Now, there are two holes in the uh, piece it attaches to. So I've got cocktail sticks sticking through. I've put the holes in the fabric as well, and we're going to use these cocktail sticks to line everything up. So this is self-adhesive. It does pull on and off. One thing I would say is make sure your fingers are clean. I've washed my hands thoroughly because you need to use your fingers to manipulate around this to get it all to set in place. But quite easy to do, it just takes a little bit of time and patience. Uh, one thing which I thought of anyway, but Jamie warned me because obviously Jamie's built this, was don't cut right up to those lines that Model Factory Hero gives you because it can leave it short. So I just left a massive overhang. And to me, as long as I get these holes lined up, we're good to go and make sure everything else is pretty much straight. So just start by edge by edge, folding it over, working it over, make sure we've got no creases. Um, and then we can come with our scissors and just trim off any excess right at the back. Now, these do sit inlaid into the uh, door cards themselves. So, if the back's showing a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but we certainly don't want any metal showing through if we can help it. Very sticky. It almost looks like a plaster from the back, this stuff. But we just cut it all flush. And then just work our way around, folding it over. And you may find some of the corners just need a little snip on an angle to get them to sit in place. Quite fun doing this. It was actually quite fun to do. There we go. 
fold it over, fold the edges in, and just give them a good burnish down with your finger. And there we go. So with one done, we can repeat that on the other three. And just a quick test fit to see how it looks. Very funky, very retro, looks very cool. We've also got the window winders to put on and the door handles as well. So they're just say glued in place in the pre-drilled holes. Bit of care and consideration there. And then like I say, repeat that for all four. And there we go, they are all done. They look really good, look very funky, typical 80s. Front ones have got the door handle armrest in as well. And then the seat belts. So I'm going to show one being assembled almost fully. 12 scale, so they're a little bit easier than 24. They're not as fiddly or cumbersome. So we're just following the instructions and using double-sided tape. Now I'm using my own double-sided tape, not the stuff that came with the kit, just because it's what I'm used to. So it's a case of follow the instructions, fold the main piece through, add a couple of pieces of double-sided tape. Like so. Peel the back and paper off. And fold it over. Nice and simple. Nice and easy. Now I'm going to speed up the rest of this footage just so it speeds it up a little bit. I'm just going to do double speed, but I'll still keep talking as I go. Right, with the lower piece, it needs folding through, looping back on itself. Uh, leave a little bit longer than you think here because you're going to cut it later on. And then more double sided tape. Uh, fold the edge down. Glue, uh, sorry, tape at the top, not the bottom. We've got the buckles for the bottom now, which are photo etch, obviously. So they're cut off of our Zoron P shears and cleaned up. Combination of the shears and the Tamiya diamond file to clean those up. And then again, feed it through. Double sided tape. Fold it over. Now, the beauty of the double sided tape is you can start this all over again if you weren't happy. Just looking at a rough measurement to make sure I'm happy how long they are. They're pretty much perfect. So happy with that. Just the adjustment piece here is a little bit too long, so I'm going to trim that, like so. I'm going to quick double check again. Now, we haven't painted these. We've left these uh, metal. They're nice and shiny after being uh, tumbled. Now, we've got the decals on here, and I like to melt these in with leveling thinner, but I thought there's no way I'm putting a brush on these. So I put some leveling thinner in the airbrush and just mist it over a light coat. Left it a few seconds, and then hit it with another one. And you'll just see that decal melt itself into the fabric and it looks so much better and it just looks like it's a part of the fabric then don't go too heavy i went a little bit heavy on one and melted the decal the touch just a little bit too much um we just need a little bit let it dry you can air dry it as well should you want as well and just spray a little bit until you're happy it's all set in place and then put that to one side to fully dry once dry we can feed it through Put some double-sided tape on the back and get them all stuck in place. Like so. There you go. Look at those seats now. Starting to come alive now. Looking really good. Then we're going to leave these as is for now. I'm not going to put any of the attachment points on. But I'm just checking when they're in place that the ribbon's long enough to reach the bar at the back. And one thing I haven't done is I haven't drilled out the actual holes in the back. So we need to do that on the chassis as well. The release buckle here, photo etch with a bit of white metal again as well. There we go. And then this is slid through the side. We'll leave a bit of an overhang of film for now. So some double-sided tape. It's up to you, up to you how you um, set these up. I like to just try and have all the pieces showing with maybe the rear buckles just... Um, just shown on top, so none of the hardware is actually hidden. So we'll bring this forward a little bit, probably a little bit more than it would naturally sit. Push it down with the tape and then lift that up over the top. There we go. And then same on the other side, so nothing is hidden at all. And there we go. That's those done. The fronts are just two looped over pieces. So it's a short length of four mil ribbon, which is the rest of what the ribbon is. And then there's some three mil in there for the loop overs. And this is what makes it a six point harness. And they're just fed through the bottom and taped in place. 
and then there's decals that I thought were the steering wheel boss one. Luckily, I had a spare one for another set of Mother Fragile Hero belts. I think I used on the Caterham. So with both decals in place, there we go. So there are mounting uh, P places for these for the side part and the back as well. Not going to put those on yet. We need the roll cage in first, but we are going to put the seat mounting brackets in place. So a couple of yabba dabba doos and a nice stringy bit of CA glue there, which we'll get rid of. There we go. And we can just pop these in place. Oh, no, you can see the bare resin underneath. The magic mystique is lost. And then put to one side to dry. And then same for the other side. And there we go. That is those. And a quick test fit as well. Make sure the brackets fit in place, which they do perfectly. Make sure we've got enough belts. We have, we've got more than enough spare belt there to go through to the back. They look great. These are going to look so nice. Well worth the uh, the money. And there we go. They look absolutely great. Very, very happy with those. So we've got to drill the holes out at the back there for them to go through. There's a mounting bar to go at the back and some PE hardware to um, mount them to the chassis as well. And there's all the bits. So the door cards are done, the seats are done, the dashboard's done. A good couple of days work and really got my mojo back on this kit. Great fun to do these bits. The dashboard, the seats, the door cards look absolutely fantastic. I'm talking to my live stream there, as I do every day. I don't know what I'm describing, but anyway, I'm describing something. Um, but they look really good. Very happy how they look. Look absolutely spanking. Right then, we've got the spare wheel tie down to do next. So a nice piece of PE for this. Using our decal tweezers to bend over the PE. The pre-scored, pre-marked, so they bend really easy. And this just makes the uh, ratchet strap for the uh, actual retention system. Posh word, eh? Retention system. So just fold over all the pieces. Like so. Follow your instructions. You can't really go wrong, to be honest. And then using the 3mm ribbon, we're going to feed it through exactly like we did on the seatbelts. Follow the instructions. With some double sided tape on each side so there's one single piece goes at the back and then two pieces go at the front and they splay out in a v pattern and um, that's how it works so two go through one one goes through the other make sure to leave enough ribbon on there to make sure we get full coverage of the wheel so nice simple to do these much easier to do in 12th and 24th i'll give it that these can be quite tiresome and, yes, annoying in 24th, but in 12th, they're not too bad at all. And then snip it off. Then with some double-sided tape, we can mount it in place. So we've got one side on first. That's the straight edge. So we'll pull that across to the straight in the middle. And then we've got this V section to go off. So hold the middle. And try and do an equidistant V cross, fold it round and underneath, and the same here as well. Space it, it is going to twist a little bit because of the nature of how it is. And there we go, there's our ratchet tie down for the spare wheel. And then these parts inside, which I completely forgot to drill out before we painted all this. I've got the appropriate size drill bit. I'm going to drill each side and the center. I can just get three drill holes in and it leaves the tiniest amount of resin to remove with a knife. So we can sort that out once we drill through. But just be very careful here. We've got a lot of hard work in the back of this. So we don't want to ruin it. So drill up three holes. That gets rid of most of the resin. There's a little tiny bit left. And all we've got to do is lightly slice away very carefully with the knife. There's two little pieces, top and bottom. And there we go, job done. And then we grab some of the paint we mixed a while back, give it a good shake up. It's Tammy TS, so it, it does this perfectly with a micro brush. Goes on pretty thick, self levels. You'll never even see the difference. Never even know it was there. And we just leave that to dry then. Now, the wiring. Now, I did have footage of me doing this wiring as well, and I've lost it. So this is for the fire extinguisher system. So what I did is on the left hand side, I've got two pieces of red wire, which are drilled all the right size for the fittings. And I wanted to make some sort of um, 
support from like um what's wrong of tape to hold them all together so i've got some normal insulation tape and sliced it perfectly thin and added it in segments along the way now i did have some footage of me doing it and i've lost it i do show it on a black wire in a minute it's not quite as clear but basically made a little bit of a, a hose system here held together glued onto the extinguishers themselves and then thread down the front of the car itself um, we're not going to do anything with these yet until we've got all the seats in the roll cage in and we'll probably use some double-sided tape on those um straps i've made and just space them out equally sorry my head's in the way there all those gray hairs that's from being a model and dealing with you lot online that's what that is i'm um, just going to lay it roughly in place for now and like i say we're not going to commit to gluing any of this in place just yet and leave enough at the front so we can make sure we make it vanish under the dashboard later. And then on the other side, we've got three to put in. So we'll do that. So I've just got some very thin insulation tape I've, I've cut with a ruler. And then we just wrap it round, get it glued in place, and then just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, snip. Dead easy. Just do that in a few spots along the way, and we end up with a nice little... Um, hose retention system and everyone's hose needs retaining and there we go fiddly to do it was about an hour later i remembered i had heat shrink and i could have just cut a tiny piece of heat shrink heated it up and done the exact same job but it's not as fun as doing this and i did this all myself so there we go there's the triple one for the other side so that goes into that one just behind the handbrake and into the other two as well um we've also got one coming off the gear stick as well and two coming off the back of the handbrake lever which we're just going to leave sticking up in the air for now until we figure out where everything's going to go but this is like a first fix for all the parts i want to get the seats glued in place the roll cage glued in place the harnesses all glued in place in there um straps and what have you before we do anything with this lot we can figure all this out later but i just wanted to get it all laid in for now so a little bit of glue on this. We're just going to line it up. Oh, it's my head again. Hello. A little bit of glue. There's a little point under the gear shifter. It is tricky to do, so just take your time. Be patient. And there we go. Let that dry. And then, like I say, two more going up the back of the handbrake lever. And there we go. That is done for now. Doesn't look too bad. Whether that's all we're going to put in there, I don't know. We're going to have a look at this later on. And there we go. There's our spare wheel as well. Look at all those wires. Oof. And then back into the box for nice safekeeping as well. As you can see top right, we've got some nice 3D printed headphones. They are slightly the wrong size. Luke is printing me some wrong, the correct size. As well as some Peltor, um, sorry, they are the Peltor headsets. As well as some helmets as well. So they'll have a nice bit of detail to inside the car as well. I just put everything in here for safekeeping. Now, if you've applied any CA glue and you put anything in a box like this, leave the lid open overnight. Let the CA glue naturally off gas. Otherwise, it will fog everything in the box. Been there and done it. I did it once with an entire Ferrari body, which had a white haze on it the next day. And I had to polish it all again. So I put everything in here for safekeeping. I know it's all safe. It's out of the way. And these live under my bench, all stacked up, nice and neat and out of the way. And uh, that's us for today. So, yeah, we've got major parts of the interior done. We can come back for part 12 and get our roll cage in, get all the seatbelt hard hardware in place, get our wiring sorted. We can't put the dashboard in yet because that goes into the actual shell. But I think we can lead on to them polishing the shell up, get the dashboard in, and maybe even getting the boot lid in place with all this hardware on and getting the body shell in place as well so there we go i think they look great i am very happy how the seats are turned out the texture paint looks great i'm glad i did that over flocking i think it suits a little bit more uh obviously i've gone really heavy handed with the texture paint really sprayed from a distance and let it dry before it hits and it's paid off it looks absolutely great carbon composite well the carbon kevlar composite decals went down superb the belt look, belts look great. Dashboard looks spanking. The door cards spanking. How many times have I said that today? The door cards look brilliant. Really like those. Very retro. 
and uh, it's coming along well. It really is. And I've got my mojo back for this kit now. Really enjoyed doing this. And I've had a new one arrive as well, which you're going to see over the weekend in a review. So if you're patron, you're going to see two weeks earlier than everybody else. If you're not, you're going to have to wait two weeks, unfortunately. But that will all become apparent in the review. It's another 12 scale one. So keep an eye out for that over the next couple of days. Uh, or check out my social media and you'll see it. So that's it. Like I said, we're back in part 12. We've got all those harnesses in place, get the roll cage in, maybe even get some of the body polished and screwed in place. Then we can get the dashboard in, some of the glass work, the, uh, the boot lid. There's lots to do now. We're really starting to push through the build. So we're really getting somewhere now. We're starting to cook on gas here. So hopefully we can get this near completed soon and we can move on to the next one, which is the kit I'm going to review tomorrow. So stay tuned on that one. It is extra special though. Extra, extra special. So yes. There we are. As I say, if you want to support the channel and get two week early access and all the videos, there's a Patreon me link down below. Pick the tier you want to be. There's all different levels of support you can do. But tier two and higher gives you two week early access and all the videos. Um, and it keeps you safe and knowledge. You keep all these videos going on the live streams because without your support, I couldn't do these. There's a PayPal me and a Buy Me Coffee link as well if you want to make a one time donation. And there's links in the description to anything and everything associated with me social media wise. Standing Machines there, umpretail.com there, my modeling page on Facebook, my Amazon affiliate store. All the products I use in my videos are linked down below. And please make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Click the bell notifications to get notified of the latest videos. And make sure you sub to the channel as well. And leave a comment. Love reading all your comments. Really do love reading them all. Um, please take the time to... Uh, leave a comment it really does spur me along with the builds so there we go glad to get the mojo back on this one and glad to get those parts out of the way because i really looking for really look forward to doing those and it's nice to get them done so there we go enjoy the rest of your day everyone take care bye bye